Hi, this video is for Chem 2045, and we're working from the Fall 2009 exam number three, and I'm going to do problem number seven right now. This problem asks you to identify which of the compounds listed are not sp 3 dehybridized at the central atom. So the first thing we'll do is write down uh, what we know, and this is the info that's given in the problem. So we have um, three molecules. BF3, ASI5, SF5, bromine with five fluorines, and xenon with four fluorines. So our problem asks us to identify which ones are not sp3d hybridized. So, whoops, not sp3d hybridized. So what you should know about hybridization is that the groups attached to the central atom are going to affect the hybridized molecule. So. Um, we'll write down here a note uh, that it depends on the number of groups on the central atom. And the number of groups on the central atom also uh, is affected by the structural orientation. So we should also know the structural orientation. And right now that's how we're going to identify the number of groups on each central atom. So we'll start here with um, boron trifluoride. So we know boron is our central atom and we have three fluorine attached. And to draw our Lewis dot structure we need to know how many valence electrons we have. So we know fluorine gives us seven valence electrons times three and then boron will give us three. So we have 24 valence electrons all together. So we can put eight on each fluorine to begin with. Then eight times three is gonna be 24 electrons. Notice that boron doesn't have a complete octet, but uh, boron happens to be one of the exceptions to the octet rule. So now we have our Lewis dock structure, we can identify um, this molecule as a trigonal planar structure. So because it's trigonal planar, we've got um, one, two, three groups. Three groups means it's going to hybridize um, so that it takes one s orbital from boron and two two p orbitals to make a hybridized sp2 orbitals. So this is sp2 hybridized, which is not sp3d hybridized. So we know fluorine is one of those that are not. Now we're going to move on to our next molecule, which is um, arsenic with a uh, 5 iodine attached to it. So we'll start with arsenic here in the middle iodine attached in five places. Now we need to know the number of valence electrons. So we have seven valence electrons for iodine times five molecules. Plus arsenic will give us five electrons. So we have 40 valence electrons all together to add to our molecule. Now if we add eight to each iodine, we might have some left over. So we have eight times five, 40. All right, we took care of all of our valence electrons. Notice that arsenic also is an exception to the octet rule. So we, as we look at our molecule, we'll notice that this is um, trigonal bipyramidal because we have this triangle here in the middle, and then these two points on either end. 
So we know our structure, which means that we have one, two, three, four, five groups. So with the five groups, that means our molecule is sp3, d, so we used one plus three plus one, so it's sp3d hybridized. That means it's not one of the answers to our problem here. So take that out because it is sp3 hybridized. Now we'll move here to sulfur with five fluorine around it. Drawing our Lewis dot structure, we need to know how many electrons we can use. 7 times 5 plus sulfur gives us 6. gives us six. Oops. I put fluorines. It's actually sulfur with four fluorines on it. I'm sorry about that mistake. So we have sulfur with four fluorines around it and we have seven times four plus six electrons. This is going to give us 28 plus six equals 34 valence electrons to work with. Now if we put eight on each fluorine, We've used 24 electrons, oh, 32 electrons, so we have two more electrons left over. The only place we can put those is on sulfur here, because it can be an exception to the octet rule. So now that we have this extra electron, or an extra pair of electrons here, we have another group. So that little invisible group makes us have five groups attached to sulfur. So. because we have five groups. We have the same structural um, orientation as this molecule over here, which is sp3d hybridized. So this one is also not an answer to our question. So we'll move on to bromine with five fluorine on it over here. Drawing our Lewis dot structure again, um, we have 7 times 5 plus bromine so we have 35 plus 7 is 42 So we can put electrons in each fluorine. So each fluorine has eight electrons on it, um, which, which means we've only used 40 electrons. So we have two more electrons left over. We can add those as an electron pair free floating out here. So that means we've got another group, uh, another invisible group in addition to the fluorines attached to bromine. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six groups. So we have six groups, which means that we are sp3d2 hybridized, because we took one s orbital, three p orbitals, and two d orbitals to make the sp3d2 hybridization. So that means uh, it's also, this one is not sp3 to hybridized, so we need to add that one to our list. Uh, now I've ran out of room over here for this one, so I'm going to put it over here and erase these two. So xenon with four fluorine on it. We've got xenon in the middle, drawing our Lewis dot structure again.
We know that fluorine gives us seven electrons times four and plus xenon, which will give us eight. So we have thirty-six valence electrons to work with. Now if we put eight on each fluorine, we've only used thirty-two. So that means we have four electrons left over. Now we can make two pair of these three electrons on xenon right here. So now we have these two groups attached to xenon. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six groups attached to xenon. This makes the orientation octahedral. So it's got six groups. which is octahedral, just as this one over here is. And so it's also sp3d2 hybridized. That means it's also, oops, we're looking for ones that are not sp3d hybridized, so this one is part of our answer. So the answer that includes all three of these molecules is going to be answer choice three. Oops. So C is our answer here. Uh, so the thing you should take away from this problem is knowing how to identify um, your hybridization on your molecules, which you can identify from the structural orientation.